Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Rich Gilbert and I have a passion for helping people to reach their goals and get financial success in their lives. And one of the foundational ways to do that is through budgeting. So that's the first part. If you are spending more than you are earning, you're not going to reach the financial goals that you set for yourself. So let's start there. And we're going to start with something called the 50-30-20 rule. I like to call it the 50-20-30 rule, to be honest. And I'll tell you why in a few seconds. The 50-20-30 rule is simple. You take 50% and that is put aside for your essentials, your needs. Okay? So, so we're talking about rent, about uh, mortgages, about groceries and all of that. You take 20% and put that towards savings and paying down debt. And that's why I like to put that first because it's important that you pay yourself first. You got to get that aside because the 30% is for all the non-essentials, the shopping trips, the nice fancy cars, things that you don't really need. That can encroach really easily in that 20% and you end up never saving. So pay yourself first. Get that 20% in there first before the 30%. Let's talk about these three things in detail. 50, 20, 30. You have net income. That's the money that you get from your employer after you pay all of your taxes. It might be that you have your own business. It might be that you have some passive income. It doesn't matter. What we're talking about is whatever income that you have after you pay all of your taxes, social security, and all those things that you have to pay to the government. That's your net take home pay. That's your net income. You take 50% of that income and that's what you're paying all of your essentials with. What I mean by essentials are things that you have to pay. Things that if you don't pay them, bad things happen. So we're talking your mortgage or your rent, your uh, land taxes or your property taxes, your food and groceries. I'm not talking about going out to dinner yet. I'm talking about just feeding yourself. Clothing, I'm not talking about that Louis Vuitton new uh, Chanel dress or something like that. I'm talking about clothing your body so that you can, uh, you can function. It also includes utilities because if you don't pay your electricity bill, they turn your electricity off or they come after you. So essentials should be 50% of your monthly net income. So you make sure that you pay that first. You set that aside. So 50% goes to those essentials that you have to pay. Okay, you put that aside first. 20% goes to paying yourself. So 20% goes to savings, and let's include debt payment in that as well. The first thing that you need is an emergency fund. Many, many people, especially in, in the United States, do not have an emergency fund. So if they lose their job, they're screwed. Hopefully that's not you, but if it is, build up the emergency fund. You want at least three months in your emergency fund that you can use in case of something. You get a big medical bill, heaven forbid, you lose your job, something happens where you have to pay out that, that money. Three months of salary worth is a good benchmark to have. Many financial advisors advise to get six months uh, saved up for that, those emergencies. If you can do that, great but let's just work on three months first so that you at least have a buffer. And I'll tell you, once you get there, your stress levels are gonna go down. If you're living paycheck to paycheck right now, as soon as you set that money aside and you're not touching it unless there's a real emergency, your stress levels are just gonna drop because you know you're covered. If you lose your job or you have some sort of emergency, you have to take care of. So set that money aside. It's gonna take you a few months to get there, especially with that 20%, but you got to do it. Second thing you have to do is pay down your debt. So debt has interest rates. We'll go in a whole other video about what, in, what debt is good, what debt is bad, and what kind of interest rates you, know, you should be paying off and, and not, depending on inflation, depending on your circumstance. But right now, you should, be, you should be at least servicing your debt. And that means to be making the minimum payments on that debt. You do not want to default on any debt that you have, especially credit card debt, because the penalties are severe. And not only on, on major interest that, that starts accruing, penalties that you pay, but also they report you to credit uh, bureaus and you can't get credit after your credit score drops. It's 
bad. So make sure you're at least putting the minimum payment there, but you shouldn't stop there, especially with credit card debt. You should get rid of that as quickly as possible. Then comes savings. So there are a couple different things to save for, right? You might be saving for college for the kids. You might be saving for retirement. You might be saving for some, you know, open a business for a, to buy a house, whatever it is. But you got to use that 20% to put it aside and start saving. Even if you don't have a savings goal in mind, you got to start putting it aside to save. And you, you don't want to put it in a normal bank account. You want to put it in some sort of investment vehicle that's going to give you interest. We'll talk about that in a future video about short term, long term things you should consider. But make sure you are taking that 20% and putting it towards an emergency fund, putting it towards debt payment, and then putting it towards savings. Now comes the fun stuff. And this is where a lot of people, especially in America, get a bit tripped up. And that is the 30% that you should be putting towards fun. This is not about essential clothing. This is not about uh, things that you need that were in the essentials. So we're in the needs area. This is about things that you really don't need. And it's different for everybody. It's different depending on the country that you're in for sure. But these are things that you can live without. So this is the fancy Gucci bag or the LV bag. These are, you know, buying a Mercedes instead of getting a Honda. The Honda is a need. A Mercedes is a want. Okay, you can convince yourself all day that the Mercedes is a need. It's not. The Honda is the need. The Mercedes is the want. And in many countries, they have great public transportation. So really, the transportation is possibly, you know, taking the subway or, you know, uh, or public transportation. That's the need. So you want to cap your wants at 30%. This includes shopping. This includes going out to dinner. This includes luxury goods. This includes vacations. It includes uh, hobbies, right? I mean, I, I love hobbies. I have a bunch of them and they can get expensive. There's no doubt about it. So you want to really limit that so that you can keep your budgeting. Okay, it's as simple as that. 50, 20, 30 rule. 50% goes to essentials. 20% goes to savings and paying yourself and debt relief and 30% you can keep aside for having the fun and doing the things that are non-essential. And if you follow that rule, it's going to help you an awful lot. You're going to be able to pay your expenses. You're going to be able to start building up a nest egg that you can actually do something with. And in future videos, we'll talk about what you can do with that, right? What kind of investments you can do. Should you put it into Bitcoin or should you put it into a mutual fund at, at Vanguard? Let's discuss that later. It's a rule of thumb. And like all rules of thumb, you need to consider how much it's applicable to your situation. Might flex here and there, but it's a good rule of thumb. Getting to financial health is fun. It, once you start getting there and you start taking control of your financial future, your anxiety is going to go down about being able to pay your bills and being able to do things that you want to do. You just got to plan for it. You can do it. If you feel like you can't, you can always get a financial advisor and talk it through with him or her and get some professional advice on what you should do. But you can do it. You can take control of your financial future and you can get into a position where those finances don't own you, but you own them. Hope you like this content. If you do, please like down below, please subscribe. I love helping people with their personal finances, love helping people reach their goals in their careers and their lives and, and deciding what they're gonna do with their lives. So if you like that sort of thing, please subscribe, come along for the journey. It's gonna be exciting. Thanks so much for coming, have a great day.